Hey guys, the user ZZZ33333 came and left some comments on my video titled Venus Project. Will it ever work? Which was posted as a response to uh, one of his videos. Anyway, he says, This is a great video. I want to thank you for taking the time to make this. Much more effective than other Venus Project supporters who call me an idiot. So I gather from this that there are some Venus Project supporters on YouTube who have been less than kind to Z. And I think that's pretty unfortunate. I hope they apologize to him. Uh, but Z, I do kind of want you to understand something. A lot of the Venus Project supporters on YouTube are constantly enduring similar treatment. And, you know, that doesn't justify them treating you that way. But I, I just want you to understand that they're kind of stressed out and on edge a lot of the time. And, well, basically there's this group of creationist conspiracy theorists on YouTube who, uh, for the most part, they're a real nasty bunch of people. All right, you know, I can talk to and have decent conversations with some of them, but for the most part, I end up blocking a lot of these people. They come out of my videos and they leave comments that are unproductive. They, uh, you know, they're not, like, really trying to make any points. They're just going out of their way to be me. Throwing insults at me, telling me they want to beat my face in or tear my guts out. So, uh, I'm just blocking a lot of these people. I, I didn't used to, though. And back when I wasn't blocking them as much, I was a little more stressed out. I was doing a lot of video responses to people where I was being condescending, mean, insulting. Now that I've started blocking a lot of people, I'm, uh, I'm finding that I'm a little more polite in my video responses. So that's my suggestion, uh, my advice to other Venus Project supporters who are having to deal with assholes on a regular basis, is uh, just block them. Uh, I know that a lot of people see it as censorship. I personally see it as no different than locking the door to keep a psychopath from coming into your house. And I think that's the way you got to look at it. All right, You don't need to waste time arguing with people who are being mean to you. Just don't deal with them. Block them. Anyways, he goes on to say, Still, not effective enough to win me over. There's too many people. And I think what Z means by there's too many people is that the earth is overpopulated with human life. This is something I hear a lot. And I understand that it's important to keep in consideration the carrying capacity of the earth and to educate people not to exceed that. But, at the present time, this is not the problem that a lot of people think it is. People think that the Earth is overpopulated because everywhere they go, they see other people. That's because they're following roads. They're going where the other people are. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's definitely areas on the planet that are overpopulated. And they can solve that problem by dispersing, separating out, going to places that aren't populated at all. This is the vast Sahara Desert. Notice how there is not one human being in this picture. And this is covering a lot of land. This isn't the only big desert on the planet either. For example, about one third of the continent of Australia is uninhabited desert land. Another third is only sparsely populated. This is a vast rainforest. If there's humans in this picture, the trees are covering them but at least we can see that this forest hasn't been torn down and replaced with a giant city. That may change in the future if people keep building inefficient houses out of wood and putting them in cities with sloppy designs. This is a vast field. Again, not a human in sight. And again, this is just one of many all around the planet. This particular field was once covered by ocean. And ocean is what makes up most of the planet. So in response to people who think the Earth is overpopulated with human life, most of the Earth isn't even inhabited by human life. And of course we want to keep it that way. We certainly don't want to be tearing down any more rainforest than we already have. It's completely unnecessary destruction. We don't need to be doing that to build our cities. There's plenty of open field we can utilize. 
Jacques Fresco wants to build cities out in the sea. And of course, we can also build cities out in the desert. Now, a lot of the times when I bring this up to people, they're like, what? You can't live out in the desert? How does that work? And, well, I just point out, well, thousands of years ago, the ancient Egyptians had a thriving society out in the desert. They lived out there for thousands of years, and this was using primitive technology. Today, our technology is way better. We can create awesome cities in the desert. We have the ability. We have the resources. Then Z goes on to say there's too many holes with all the alternative energy plans. Now, I don't know what specific holes it is that he's referring to, uh, but you know I've heard some of the criticisms to some of the various alternative energy plans, um, and so far I haven't heard anything that's actually relevant to what it is that we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, to give you an example of what I mean, <coughs> um, someone told me recently to Google geothermal triggers earthquakes. Apparently his point in that was that geothermal power had you know would have something to do with triggering earthquakes. Um, so I went to the Google search engine and I typed in geothermal triggers earthquakes like he asked me to do and some pages came up talking about how uh, people had been doing you know drilling deep into the earth and it was like setting off earthquakes. And, you know, basically the reason they were, why they were drilling is because they wanted to utilize the uh, heat within the earth, you know, for geothermal power plants. And the issue I have with this guy's point about this is that it, <laughs> it, it's not geothermal power that's to blame. These people are drilling deep down into the earth. And that's not even necessary for harnessing geothermal power. I'll demonstrate my point again. Then Z goes on to say, and the Venus Project is still a humanistic way of life, rather than biocentric. Actually, it's more biocentric than you realize. We want to utilize clean energy for the purpose of taking care of the planet. We want to create a better environment, not just for humans, but for all life. For example, we want to do away with zoos. No more capturing animals and imprisoning them for the entertainment of human beings. If people want to observe animals, they may go observe them in their natural habitat. And we're going to make it easier for people to do this. And of course, in a better environment where we aren't deforesting habitats, if animals are more used to friendly visitations from humans, they're less likely to see us as a threat. They're less likely to attack us. They will act more like your average house cat. We have to recognize that the animal kingdom is one big extended family. We have common ancestors with one another. We don't kill animals. What, you mean we're all vegetarians in you your new world? experiment on... No, I'm not vegetarian. Nanotechnology. No, 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 no,
You know what nanotechnology is? I do know what nanotech Taking atoms Lots and arranging them things. in whatever molecular structure you want. The nanotechnologists tell me they're 15 years away from it. So we can so make a steak without killing They'll be a, able to make a, steak a car. or anything you want without minding it anymore. Give me a martini straight up with uh, two olives for the vitamin.